Yes, it is 8.42 New York time. And I got to my regular unit and they took my patient away, my black guy. And now I'm getting switched units. This is exactly what happened before at the other hospital. As soon as I told somebody and like, like management and tried to advocate for my patient, they take the patient away from me and then they move me. <sighs> so like I legitimately don't even know what to do anymore. Like even the advocacy groups don't give a shit about these people. Like literally, like black lives don't matter here. And I mean, that's pretty sad that somebody who is white and lives hundreds of miles away from the city gives more of a shit about these people than the actual people in this city. Like, for real. Like, I had a complete breakdown yesterday because, you know, I missed an important email to do a revision on my proposal so my proposal got canceled because I was trying to advocate for my patient and talk to management here and get the care that he needs because he's being medically mismanaged um and I just had a complete fucking breakdown because you know what my entire proposal got canceled because I you know wasted my time advocating for a fucking patient who's just gonna die anyway <sighs> you know and sure enough they take the patient away from me and then Almost two hours into the shift, they switch me units. This is exactly what happened at the other hospital when I was advocating for the little Hispanic lady. You know, guys, here's the thing. Let me try and put things into context for you, okay? I know not everybody's gonna live. I'm not that fucking green or ignorant or you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to think that, okay? I know we're gonna have a shit ton of people die. But these people aren't dying from COVID. Let me give you several examples here. Uh, an anesthesiologist um, intubated the patients, like, I think it was right, uh, brand, like, bronchi and of a patient and they couldn't get the sats up and for about five hours like we were waiting on a chest x-ray to confirm that the placement was wrong and in the meantime while we're waiting for that and we've told the anesthesiologist that it was placed wrong because like literally only one side of his fucking chest is like inflating um he dies okay um a patient had a heart rate of 40 and the resident <laughs> doing chest compressions on him which is not what you do you just externally pace them or you you know give him some atropine and then you know I run in there to stop him from doing chest compressions on somebody with a fucking pulse and then he decides to push epi he throws some pads on them on him to, to defibrillate the guy in bradycardia okay he has a heart rate of 40 in a stable, you know, bradycardic rhythm, we just need to give him some, like some atropine and pace him. He fucking defibrillates him and kills him. And I was literally ran out of like the patient's room to get like the director of nursing who was standing out there. And I'm like, can you stop him? He's going to kill that patient. He's going to kill that patient if he defibrillates him with bradycardia and a heart rate of 40. And the director of nursing just shook his head and I turned around and he killed the dude. Okay, there was a nurse who played, placed an NG tube into, um, into some guy's lungs and filled his lungs with tube feeding. There was a nurse who confused uh, a long-acting insulin with a short-acting acting insulin and gave 30 units of a fast-acting insulin and killed the guy. <sighs> what else? Other stuff have I seen? Yeah. It's just here they're just gonna let them rot on the vent. They're medically mismanaging these patients. And like, I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not professing to be a doctor by any means. But there's, like I said, basic standards of care that we have to do. Like, when somebody's low on blood, like literally on the brink of a critical low blood level, we should replace the blood. But I asked the residents and they're like, does he have internal bleeding? And I said, no. Then they're like, well, we're not replacing the blood. Well, here's the thing. 
In these COVID patients, they all eventually need a blood transfusion. Their blood, like, if you don't have enough blood to actually oxygenate your body, the vent settings don't fucking matter, okay? <laughs> they don't matter because you have no oxygen carrying capacity of your blood, okay? <sighs> I told you about the patient where, like, all that, like, purulent drainage just kept seeping into his lungs because the ET tube cuff was leaking and nobody has a fucking manometer here to check the pressures. And I finally figured that out. And I kept saying, hey, you know what? His white blood cell count is steadily, like, you know, we're having a problem with it. Like, do you want to start some antibiotics? No. Well, does he have a fever? And I said, no, he doesn't have a fever. They didn't want to start antibiotics. Day shift nurse finally got a chest x-ray. He has full-blown pneumonia now. Like, I've been telling them this for a while, but because he didn't have a fever, they didn't want to give him antibiotics. <sighs> we have a nurse who, like, fell asleep at the fucking nurse's station while we were all in rooms, and her norepinephrine ran out, and the guy had no fucking blood pressure and didn't perfuse his brain, and I'm pretty sure he's brain dead. That same nurse is now running a CRRT machine, a dialysis-like machine, that she has never done before. She said she'll figure it out. Okay? I'm pretty fucking smart, and I figure a lot of shit out, but I would never attempt to try and figure out a CRRT machine on the fly. Like, we are adequately staffed. There's a shit ton of staff in there, like, and we have a nurse who does CRRT in there. She has a different patient load. We told them, like, hey, let's just swap these nurses so the one that knows how to work this machine can work this machine, but they didn't want to do that. So I'm pretty sure that patient will be dead here in a couple hours. And this is why I freaked the fuck out yesterday. Because nobody is listening. They don't care what is happening to these people. They don't. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. I mean, we're not going to save everybody. That's fine. Like, come on, guys. We're not God. But, like, some of these people, hey, we know that they're not going to live. Let's start a hospice unit or something, you know? Like, they don't need to be in the ICU. Let's change course. Let's do palliative care or something. Like, literally, some of these people are just on sedation to keep them on the vents. Nothing else. I have a lady on a trank on a vent, and she's not even fucking cognizant. She's not even on sedation. You know what we give her every day? We give her breathing treatments, albuterol, and uh, she gets uh, insulin. And that's it. That's it. We're not treating the COVID, guys. Like, for real, we're not treating the COVID. <sighs> you know, every day we try and get these guys off the vents, right? Because, you know, there's criteria for weaning. Every day, the day shift nurse will wean them down, like, to, like, minimum sedation. <sighs> every night we come in and we get the same two residents and they fucking max out all the sedation again and undo all the work from the day shift. Then the day shift attending will come in and they'll all do rounds. And they'll be like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent. So we had to turn all the sedation on. And I'm like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent because it's in the wrong vent mode. So. I legit don't even know what to do anymore. Like, I tried calling advocacy groups. I tried talking with management here, like, the nursing admin. Like, nothing. Nobody's doing anything. <sighs> we still have a 100% mortality rate in the ICU unit. I just left. But, I mean, they're living longer because we have, like, legit ICU nurses there. So... CDC finally, like, not the CDC, FDA approved yesterday the remdesivir study, like, to start using remdesivir for uh, COVID patients. <laughs> Guys, I don't even know what to do anymore, and this is why it had a complete fucking breakdown, like... I literally had to call my friend Lisa and FaceTime her and she answered the fucking phone while she was in the shower because she like knew I was having a hard time to talk to her. 
because it's like going in the fucking twilight zone. Like, everyone here is okay with this. Look, the only way I can kind of put this into context for everybody is, and this is going to be kind of an extreme example, this is like really the only thing I can come up with, is like if we were in Nazi Germany, and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber. I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good. This is bad. This is wrong. We should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there. You're doing a great job. You can't save everybody. You're, you know, you're amazing. You're a great nurse. Guys, I know I'm a fucking good nurse. I know I go in there and I give it 500% every day. I know I'm not being negligent. Okay, I fucking know that. What I need is someone to help me save these people from being killed. Okay? From gross negligence and complete medical mismanagement. And no one is listening to me. Like, for real. Nobody's listening. I even tried getting a hold, like, of black advocacy groups here. <laughs> they just put me on hold or hang up on me. Tried talking to management. Now I got moved units. Like, I legit don't know what to do anymore. Can someone come up with, like, some type of a solution for me? Because I'm kind of out of ideas. You know, I and try and talk with some of the other nurses here, and they're like, well, you can't save everybody. And they all know what's happening. They all agree with me, and they all just shake their heads. And I'm like, am I the only one who is not a sociopath? To think that this is okay? I mean, guys, they literally don't even know when they're dead. Like, how many times have I told you they've assigned me a dead person? <laughs> like, how long have they been dead? Nobody knows. <laughs> like, how is anybody assessing anything without a stethoscope? Normally we have, like, those disposable stethoscopes. But I knew what we were coming into, so I brought my old junkie one. Nobody, nobody has listened to anybody's lungs as long as I've been here. Even with disposable stethoscopes. I, you know, I keep telling them that, you know, the guys are, like, the, my patient's going acidotic. We need to do something about this before his kidneys shut down, you know, give him some bicarb or something like that. And this is what they do. They let the patient's blood get acidotic. Their kidneys shut down. And then at the last minute, another fucking trauma. This is like the fifth fucking trauma tonight. Some dude got fucking shot in front of the hospital. Like, two to the chest and two to the abdomen. What the fuck is wrong with these people? <sighs> yeah, so anyways, kidneys shut down, and at the last fucking minute... They finally decide to run bicarb. So they run five liters of bicarb into a person who's gained 20 pounds of water weight and completely throw him into heart failure and he dies several hours later. That was one of my patients. So I let them know. Like they had me start the bicarb like before I left one night, and by the time I had come back in, the next shift he was dead. And they assigned him to me. And he was already in a body bag. <laughs> Like, guys, they're not dying of COVID, okay? Like, yeah, people are going to fucking die of COVID. Like, yeah, some people legit will end up with multi-organ failures and will just throw the clots and kill them, like, and die, people. I fucking know this. I'm not, like, some fucking new grad, okay? That's going to save everybody in the world, okay? I am literally telling you that they're murdering these people. And nobody will listen to me. I mean, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but... I'm pretty sure that when you defibrillate somebody with a heartbeat of 40 in a stable rhythm and you kill them, that's murder. And I'm pretty sure that when 
you put somebody's peep up to like 25 and peep doesn't go past i think like 15 20 and you, you blow their lungs out and they die i'm pretty sure that's murder <sighs> you know i mean i've just watched a doctor drop a central line and fucking rupture like the sub like clavian like vein and the guy fucking bled to death <sighs> I mean, COVID didn't break that central line. COVID didn't kill that guy. I mean, he was a COVID patient. I mean, every single patient I've taken care of, guys, is a COVID patient. Like, I've never had a non-COVID patient, okay? I mean... I don't even know what to say anymore. So, and that's why I got upset yesterday, because nobody's listening. I literally had to call my friend Lisa because I'm like, dude, I am not crazy, right? Like, this is wrong, right? watched an anesthesiologist like an ET tube and rushed for their esophagus and the guy choked to death on his own blood. Ah, COVID didn't place that ET tube incorrectly. And nobody cares because they're all minorities and we're in the fucking hood. You know, and that's just not okay. You know, I grew up really poor, and so I know what it's like to be, like, completely forgotten and for nobody to advocate for you. And that's why I get really upset, guys. Because, like I said, I know that a lot of people are gonna die, but, you know, COVID didn't cause that pneumo, and incorrectly placed ET to place that pneumo, and then they wouldn't let me fix it. Like, all I had to do was, like, adjust it. And they wouldn't let me do it. <sighs> so if anyone's got any idea what the hell I can do to save my one black guy before they completely transfer me out of this hospital, that would be great. Because he's mentally there. When he sees us come in, his heart rate and his blood pressure drop up. And he doesn't sink with the vent. Because he can see us. And when we leave, he calms down again. He just physically can't communicate with us. Like I told you, I had Stephanie explain to him what was happening to him. Because you can't hear me very well through a respirator. Plus, I'm sure that respirator is probably scary. Especially if you're kind of out of your mind from all the sedation. But he's a cab driver and lives a couple blocks away from here. So. He has some family, but. The problem is. It said 999999 for the phone number and I didn't get the address before like I abruptly got moved I'm sitting in the vending machine room because it's nice and cool I'm in between units right now so they haven't realized I'm gone I figured I'd have a mini meltdown and then get my shit together because I've never been to the other unit <laughs> mind you I've been on this unit the whole time and whatever I'm flexible but once again you know I talked to admin the next day I got moved what happened at the other hospital. They don't care what's happening to these people. And I just have to keep watching them die. And
There's like this weird telenovela on. I think it's about a dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tried talking to hospital management. I tried calling CMS. I tried calling the equivalency of their division of aging. I tried calling a couple black power groups in the area. <laughs> Who else? I mean, this took several hours. This is why I missed that email, the revision for my proposal. Because, like, fuck, guys, I tried contacting a newspaper. Nobody called me back. So... Stacy, fuck. You'd probably lose your mind because you're not a sociopath thinking this is all okay. That's just weird, guys. They're all okay with it. Like, I tell you, we get on the fucking bus and we go into the twilight zone here. Like, how do you not know when your patient is dead? For real. I mean, back at that other unit when shit was just crazy and bodies were just fucking dropping. Yeah, I can understand that. But guys, you have a shit ton of staff. Like, yeah, we have hundreds of extra nurses that have been are still here that are not part of hospital staff managing these patients. But we're on top of it now. We're on top of it now. There's no reason to not know when your patient's dead. I mean, there's no reason you should be managing a dialysis machine never knowing how to use a dialysis machine when there's a dialysis nurse in there. My hand's shaking because I'm so pissed. Yeah, that nurse that was sleeping in the corner there. She was she's from the she was from the ER yesterday, like when I had my first original breakdown. And uh and uh, she's like, well, they don't just unnecessarily intubate them. They try and, you know, do bite them. I'm like, girl, I am not fucking green. I know some, like, people need a, a tube dropped, okay? Like, I'm not saying that. Like, at the other hospital, they were doing unnecessary intubations because they had no fucking clue how to put the vent into, in, into CPAP or BiPAP. Yeah, I mean. So... I mean, but yeah, there's like legit indications like, fuck, that dude needs a tube. Yeah, I, I know that. I know that. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah, my lead at the other hospital who advocated for the patients too. Like the first day I got there and I was in orientation, the, that crash course orientation, he warned me that I was going to have a problem. He would advocate for the patients too. They fucking moved him too. He's at a completely different hospital. I tried reaching out to him, but he hasn't texted me. Like, I, what do you think? I saw what was bad? He saw way worse shit than that. 